So the big question everyone is asking is, will we enter a recession now that the Federal Reserve has announced a pivot? If you guys didn't hear the news last week or this week, uh, the Federal Reserve uh, decided to announce the first rate cut of 50 basis points on September 18th. This means that technically speaking, it should be less expensive for businesses and people like you and I to borrow money. Debt should be cheaper. And normally this causes expansion, right? Because if it's cheaper to borrow money, therefore net profit should grow, economy should expand, and consumers are enabled to be able to spend more money at lower cost, therefore boosting the economy and boosting the stock market. But it seems like the market isn't reacting that way. Now, there's a lot of different factors, and I kind of wanted to break it down all in this video and lay it all out for you. Please just understand that what I'm talking about in this video is simply my opinion. I am going to show you different data. All I encourage you to do is make sure you do your own due diligence as well. So the thing that I wanted to first show you is this is, again, when the Federal Reserve announces the first rate hike, um, or I'm sorry, rate cut in correlation to the federal fund rate. The federal fund rate is, again, uh, what, what rates are, right? So we were previously at 5.5%. The Federal Reserve announced a 50 basis point rate cut, therefore dropping the federal funds rate, right? Uh, and then this shows the performance of the S&P 500. The S&P 500, for those that are not familiar, is a basket of companies known as the top 500 most valuable companies. It's a pretty good indication of how our overall economy is doing. So you guys can see the blue line, and the blue um, line is going to be the federal funds effective rate. And the black line is going to be the S&P 500 index. Now, you guys could see dating back from 2000, 2007, 2008, 2020, and where we are right now. Anytime that the federal funds rate is relatively high and we begin to cut the federal funds rate, you could see that we go from a growing economy, the green that you see here, this was the 2000, and then when they begin to cut interest rates, how we enter a downturn, therefore a potential recession, as they begin to chip away at the federal funds rate, yes, dropping interest rates, hoping to boost our economy, but therefore, actually, if you look at the S&P 500, sending us into a downturn. And then we begin to pick up. Again, this is the 2008 financial crisis. You guys could see that this is where we began to start cutting interest rates in 2007. We did continue to grow for a little bit. And then again, going into 2008, we be, uh, began to enter that downturn. And this, again, is when the um, Federal Reserve started to cut interest rates. Now, uh, this also happened in 2020, as you guys could see. This is when the Federal Reserve began to cut interest rates, right? Based off of the blue line here, the federal funds rate was relatively on the higher side. They began to cut interest rates. The market upticked for a little bit, as you guys can see. From 2019 is when I be, uh, when I believe they began to cut rates. And then right around 2020 uh, to 2021 is when we began to enter this downturn, right? And then we went on this strong rally. Overall, one thing that you will notice is that markets are more bullish than they are bearish. Markets always tend to recover. It's a very simple saying is, can you tolerate the time that the market, that it will take for the market to recover? Um, now, this is where we are right now. As you guys could see, this is our federal fund rate as of right now. And this is where the overall S&P 500 market is. So the question that a lot of people are asking is, okay, you know, now that we began to start cutting interest rates, are we going to see a downturn on the S&P 500? Now, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper and I didn't want to just to, uh, you know, I feel like in my previous video when I talked about the downturns of the correlation between the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates and the market entering a recession, it's not something that happens right away. And there is always some form of trigger in the last three downturns. And I'm not here to sugarcoat it. I'm not here to pretend like they, there weren't triggers that sent the market into a free fall. And we, as of right now, have not identified or come across that significant trigger. Um, originally in 2000, it was the dot-com crisis, right? When every company was uh, experiencing exponential growth as the dot-com era um, you know, began to expand. In 2008, it was the financial crisis, the housing market bubble crash. Again, that was the trigger. Uh, in 2020, that was the COVID pandemic. The entire world went to uh, went through a shutdown, right? That was the trigger. That is very important to not ignore because it's not just that, oh, the Federal Reserve started cutting interest rates and right away, 
just automatically the market entered a recession. That is not the case, right? There is a trigger and that is something that I'm going to refer back to at the end of this video. But I wanted to make sure that I was very open with you guys that you understood the correlation. With that being said, um, I wanted to go ahead and share this article with you very quickly. The thing that, you know, they explained very well is we talked about 2019, that was the pandemic, uh, 2007, that was a housing uh, crisis, right? And then 2001 was the dot-com bubble. Uh, and this takes into consideration within the first three months, six months, a year, how the markets tend to react right after the Federal Reserve starts to cut interest rates. And you could see, other than the last three from 2001 to 2019, the markets technically did grow, right? We could see from um, 1998, we could see from 1995, we could see from 1989, we could see from 1984, and then on 1981, there was a slight downturn, but then in 1980, there was an uptick, 1974, there was an uptick. So I wanted to show you guys all the data. So understanding that initial correlation, uh, when you look at overall history, the initial reaction of the S&P 500 of our, just the initial reaction of our overall economy is naturally good if you don't really take the last three recessions into consideration. You guys can see within three months, again, aside from the most recent three, we tend to experience an average 4% return and a median of 6%. If you look at the last six, uh, the six months after the initial rate cut, again, the last three, you saw somewhat of a downturn, except in 2019. But within the first six months, again, you see an average increase of around 12%. And then within one year, on average, other than the last three, you tend to see an uptick. So this is the thing that I want you guys to understand is because historically speaking other than the last three triggers they all had triggers the market did uptick when the federal reserve started to cut interest rates now again we kept talking about triggers this was the dot-com bubble the housing crisis and the pandemic so what could be our trigger this time it's the elephant in the room how the, and, and again, I'm extremely biased when it comes down to this. We are 35, almost 35.4 trillion dollars in debt. The U.S. the U.S. as a whole. And as we enter this presidential election, the part that baffles me is that I don't care if you're a Republican, I don't care if you're a Democrat, I don't care if you identify yourself as a liberal. Um, it's besides the point, the elephant in the room that we cannot ignore and that these candidates continue to avoid is even in the most recent debate, Kamala nor Trump were asked any questions about the U.S. debt ceiling um, or the U.S. debt. Because as they continue to point the finger on whose fault it is, guess what? What is the ticking time bomb? $35.4 trillion in debt. And the main concern right now for the Federal Reserve is no longer inflation as they have it a little bit more in control as we sit at 2.5%. But it's now the labor market. And that is also another correlation that we began to see if you look at history when it comes down to these triggers. I can't speak for you. I can just speak for the people that I've gotten feedback from, a lot of my followers. A lot of my followers, as they want to get into trading, you know, they're almost just resorting to wanting to learn uh, either about the market or how to start their own business. And the whole reason behind that is because they are struggling to find a job. There's people that are graduating college. And please let me know down in the comment section if maybe this is just people that I'm hearing this feedback from, but it doesn't represent everyone, is that they cannot get a job. People are applying 50, 100 times to so many different companies, yet no one is hiring. And a lot of you guys heard me talk about it in yesterday's video where FedEx, the stock itself, just dropped 15% because its overall market outlook for our economy is not good. And again, FedEx doesn't represent our entire economy, but it tells us and gives us a little bit of a better understanding of how they see the economy doing in the up and coming quarters and they lowered their expectation because they do expect a slowdown so you are telling me that while everyone continues to talk about oh 
the overall market is at nearly all time highs, right? If you look at the S&P 500 and if you look at the Dow Jones, markets are thriving. Inflation is now under control, yet no one can afford a mortgage. No one can afford rent. If you really pay attention to the cost of consumer goods, they're up 25 to 40 percent than what they were four or eight years ago. It's not. And again, it's not a, a political issue. It is just a fact that it doesn't matter what president uh, we end up electing. It is something that we can't continue to ignore because as of right now, the United States is paying about one point two to one point three trillion dollars in just interest every single year that breaks down to about three billion dollars a day that we are paying back in just interest this seems to be this never ending pit where the u.s will just have to continue to print money and devalue the dollars that are sitting in our bank accounts so when you ask me what i think can be our trigger i think it could be our u.s debt and it's something that both political candidates continue to avoid to talk about and one thing that I just want to end this entire video with is now that you understand the correlation between when the Federal Reserve starts to cut interest rates and how the markets tend to originally uptick other than the last uh, three recessions, what I also want you to understand is how important it is when choosing a candidate. I mean, I think Warren Buffett said it best and he said, I can fix the deficit problem in the U.S. and it's you give whatever elected official within its period, uh, in this case, it would be for the next four years, that they fix our debt issue. If they add, therefore, they do not contribute to our U.S. economy if we, ex if we experience a slowdown and or if we actually see an increase in our debt, that elected official should no longer be allowed for re-election. And imagine if we held not just our presidents, right, but every elected official, as in every politician, every congresswoman, and every congressman, every elected official, that if they did not do their part to make sure that they focus the, uh, the main issue right now in the United States that would help everyone, both the upper class and the lower class, and it's that U.S. debt. If they do not contribute to fixing that huge problem, they should not be allowed for re-election. I mean, you guys let me know what you think. I just, I feel like it's something that we continue to talk about, yet nothing gets done, right? We continue to try to point the finger on what political party is at fault. But guess what? Both of them are at fault at, at this point. It, it's, besides the, it, it's besides the point. It's not you against me. It's let's hold our politicians accountable, if not and if they don't end up showing us the results that they promise, they shouldn't be allowed to be reelected. It's, it's that straightforward. Show us the results, not just these promises, empty promises, but show us that results that, that things are actually getting better and not just fabricating numbers to make it look more favorable for the Democrats or the Republicans. I'm, I'm tired of this like back and forth of you against me. Uh, I'm not here to compete with you. I hope that you know that, you know, you're not here to compete with me either. And it's just, it's really important that we pay attention to that elephant in the room. And I really do think that our U.S. debt um, is something that can contribute to be our trigger for 2024 to 2025 and potentially sending us in a recession as the Federal Reserve starts to cut interest rates. Hope that I'm wrong. I hope that they can uh, start to make adjustments and, uh, we can begin to see a downtick in our unemployment rate, but we'll see. The Federal Reserve believes that they can uh, continue to control uh, the unemployment rate and keep it below 4.2 to 4.4%. We're already at 4.2, if I'm not mistaken, and they do not expect it to go beyond 4.4. So we'll see. Uh, let me know down in the comment section if you know, you're someone that continues to apply for jobs, but still can't get any anything back. And it's just, it's not going to be a surprise to me because uh, as inflation is supposedly under control, just think about this. A big part of when it comes down to inflation, it's going to be um, how expensive it is to buy a home, right? And or to take out a mortgage or to rent. And the thing that you cannot ignore is naturally, as the Federal Reserve begins to cut interest rates, it's going to be cheaper to borrow money. Therefore, our mortgages or interest rates should be cheaper. So therefore, if that's the case, then 
buying pressure should grow in real estate in the housing market and what do you think are going to what do you think is going to happen to prices as demand begins to grow it's going to begin to go up so therefore prices continue to go up for the same properties that are available now just because of cheaper interest rates therefore bringing our inflation rate back up but again we'll follow up we'll see if they end up being able to fix um, and or just print more money uh, to prolong this uh, continuous issue. So excited to follow up. Just wanted you guys to understand um, the correlation between the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates and how our, our overall economy um, initially reacts and then how it reacts in the months that follow based off of not just the last three recessions, uh, but overall just looking back in the past 40 to 50 years. So I appreciate your time. I hope that earned your thumbs up. I do trade live every single morning. And if you ever want to tune on in, it's the second link in the description down below. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take care, team.